Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nick Mulliken. I'd like to welcome you to the National Ballet Summer Intensive Webinar for 2017-2018. Along with me is Catherine Lindsley, my school artistic associate, and to my left, I have Alexandra Hutchinson, who is an MB2 dancer. She was with us last summer. We're going to take you through some of the different aspects of our summer intensive. For some of you, you may know these things already, but we did make a few changes this year. So if you have any questions, we'd encourage you to go ahead and ask them in the chat. They are, it is readily available for you. We will try and get to it at the end. Um, initially, when we were talking about our National Valley Summer Intensive, I think you'll be able to recognize that we are doing seven different studio, I'm sorry, seven different sessions and six different studios. Uh, what we do during the course of that time is focus on a plethora of classes, and I'm actually gonna have uh, Kate Lindsley talk about just a little bit in terms of what it is that we do with uh, our technique here. Hi guys, so my name is um, Kate Cruz Lindsley. I uh, recently just joined the National Valley faculty um, coming from Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, there I was leading a program at the Waterford School, the Waterford Dance Academy, and my professional uh, career existed. I was a senior soloist at Ballet West for 10 years, and I was at Kansas City Ballet for five with various training um, before that. And I think one of my draws coming here to share um, my teaching and to learn from the faculty that we have here is with this idea of how we find strength in our training and also looking at a connection of artistry. So when we are you know, putting together a line of the classes that we would like to put together for the summer intensive, you know, part of my job as the school artistic associate is to oversee the academy and its faculty is to help and get, um, to look at some guidance in the artistic development of the professional training division syllabus, which includes uh, PTD 1, 2, and trainees, as well as teaching that second company. And so kind of looking at how all of those pieces come in together, um, it's really at this training foundation that the summer intensive is meant to be and is a rigorous ballet training intensive. We do have some supplement classes that we add in that can focus on developing artistry even further. But when we're looking at that um, training with a strong technique class, you're looking at point classes, variations, you're looking at partnering, you're looking at character, you're looking at rep that is done specifically here at Nashville Ballet and beyond. Um, and the classes that are offered are very much focused in the uh, technical development and growth of each dancer that attends on all levels but we are also looking for that through line that connects you on our trajectory as you start from different levels um, that would connect you to uh, National Valley in a very specific way. So, and I think that's a great sort of segue. I'd like to make sure that we have an opportunity for Alexandra Hutchinson to introduce herself. Yes. Tell a little bit more about what it is that you do here on a day-to-day -day basis. Sure. So, um, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, I started my training at the Academy of the Dance in Wilmington, Delaware. Following that, I moved to Washington, D.C. I went to the Washington School of Ballet for a long time, and then when I graduated high school, I attended Indiana University at the Jacobs School of Music, where I was a ballet major with an outside field in arts management. And then following my senior year, I auditioned at the International Association of Blacks in Dance in Dallas, Texas where I um, was approached by Paul Basterling and I came to Nashville Ballet for a company class. And following that, I went to the summer intensive um, this past summer in 2017, and now I'm an MB2 dancer here. And so um, I'm excited to get to know you guys and tell you about my experience and hopefully um, you'll be able to come to the intensive and really have the experience that I had. Wonderful. Well, let's start a little bit with where Nashville Ballet is located. We are obviously in Nashville. We All of our classes and all of our studios are at the Martin Center for Ballet, which was opened in the summer of 2015. There are seven brand new studios, all with, <clears throat> excuse me, sprung floors that have brand new Marley on them. We're located right in the residential neighborhood near Vanderbilt University. Um, behind me, when we cut back the camera, you'll be able to see uh, our Studio A, which is where we'll have our pre-professional session taking most of their classes, but also doubles as an in-house theater for us uh, that we can turn into a black, black box, you can see right behind me. <clears throat> we are also able to 
seat about 200 people in that theater so it was very exciting but for those of you that will be coming to the end of the summer presentation do know that that means tickets are slightly limited and we'll get into that a little bit later in some of your information packets uh our studios are quite large which is wonderful we like the space that it provides us one it allows for our teachers to create combinations that let students move all the way across the floor uh get some really big jumps in there yes mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. provide um us with the space to move and not to feel cramped. Uh, sometimes those classes uh, are going to feel like there are a lot of students in there. We actually try and keep them small to about 25 to 30 students per level, which is great. Uh, with teachers giving individual attention, would you agree sure. with that? Yes, I would definitely agree with that. Um, I loved my experience here uh, over the summer and of course this year. It was really great to have that one-on-one -on -one, um, individual experience with uh, the class and the studios are very spacious, so I love to travel on, on the dance floor, so I definitely enjoyed doing that and um, getting to know my colleagues before I came here at Nashville Valley, too. It was really great coming in the summer and having that full experience. And would you say that you enjoy the rest of the space as well, not just the studio? Oh, definitely, yes. Um, the facility is wonderful. It was one of the things that attracted me when I came here um, in my company class earlier last year. Well, good. I think we would like to talk a little bit about uh, the experience that some of our students have had in the past year. So again, I'm going to refer to Ali a little bit and tell us a little bit about, you know, you like the studio space, you like the classes. Uh, did you feel like they were intense? Did you feel like you got the training? Did you feel like you had the opportunity to grow as an artist, as a technician, sort of as Miss um, Lindsley had outlined there? Is that accurate? or Definitely. Um, I love the amount of faculty and rotating uh, teachers that we had throughout the course of the summer and um, I really felt like we had a great range of training and um, the classes length were just right because we had time to work on our stamina and also um, mm -hmm. really attack our technique and uh, really have a great chance to grow and um, learn a lot here for sure. And I think as we take a look at some of the uh dancers that have been with us in the past you can see that each one of them has gone on to some level of professional career or has had this opportunity but that's not exclusively what we do when we train dancers here we really are trying to give them the opportunity to grow as artists and individuals for some of our younger dancers this is a great opportunity to step away from home and train in a different environment where they can hear perhaps the same corrections but in a completely different way or sometimes brand new and unique material and really, we like to think of National Ballet as an opportunity for students to grow as a whole person as well. So this can be a first time away from home for students where they get to live in a dormitory, mm -hmm. which is also quite nice. And they have the opportunity to interact with friends, build networks, and really develop the opportunity to grow within their field, but also just kind of lifelong friends. Yes, yes definitely. I meet a lot of friends with um, dorming at the Belmont University um, suites and they had great food there, um, great transportation, and you know you get to really meet a lot of people with the events that they have outside of the studio and in the studio as well. And tell us a little bit when you were in your, you had the pre-professional session last year, correct? Mm -hmm. yes. And you had the opportunity to see some of the company dancers that were in that class. Was that inspirational for you? Oh, for sure. Um, it's always great to see uh, older dancers and dancers that have moved through uh, the works of MB2 and the summer intensive here at National Ballet and the progress that they've grown into and um, seeing them in class with us is definitely an inspiration and it's a great way to work towards your goal and push yourself to be at their level. Yeah, I think one of our favorite things about National Ballet is that we focus uh, specifically on using summer intensive to transfer students into the year-round program either through our trainee or our MB2 depending on the level of the student. And then from there, they actually move into the company. One of the things I've always asked is how many dancers actually are in the company that went through the MBT process? And it's very, very interesting that I think about 85 to 90% of the women in our, in our company actually went through our second company and had that experience, which means they also attended our summer intensive and had that opportunity presented to them. You can see a couple of dancers here, Gerald and Kayla, who are both rising stars and do a lot of uh, soloist and principal work with us currently in the company that also went through this exact same process. Uh, I'm going to turn this over to Kate right now who maybe can speak a little bit about some of the guest faculty that we'll have here at National Ballet during the course of the summer. 
Right, so I, I will speak um, specifically about Jeff Rogers, who's coming to us um, from Ballet West, and I had the pleasure of dancing with him in the company. But um, what he brings to the table is that he also worked under three artistic directors at Ballet West. So he was with Bruce Marx, John Hart, and Jonas Koga, and um, kind of that wealth of working with these different direct directors can help also create a very vast teaching platform. But what he brings specifically in his resume currently as he's teaching is that he has a very strong uh, pedagogy in men's classes. He's actually teaching a current class at the University of Utah in that. And so he helps to develop strength in male dancers that I think that he personally brings to all of the classes. And as a teacher, I have developed um, some of the ways that I approach um, that, uh, my own technique in teaching from watching him. So whether it is teaching a class that specifically may be looking at some uh, born and bill aspects of teaching or teaching a men's class, I feel like he has um, been a great coach in that. But he uh, teaches currently at Ballet West and in their summer program. He's been at the Dallas Ballet Conservatory. He's been at the Berlin Ballet School, uh, slotted to teach at San Francisco Ballet, as well as been invited to teach at Cuban National and English National Ballet. So he brings a, a wealth of experience to us. And on a personal note, I've had Jeff as a teacher, and I can tell you he is by far one of my favorites and also one of the most challenging, and he brings the best out of his students. I really enjoy it. Another one of our guest artists that we're going to be having join us again this year is Jared Reddick. Jared joined us from the University of North Carolina School of the Arts, where he is the assistant dean of ballet and spent a great deal of time actually working with Susan Jaffe, but also traveling the country, putting together their Nutcracker, and has been with us now, at least from the time that I've been here, which is about three years. And each time I hear comments of how wonderful he is, he works with students of every level, he teaches play class, and brings a really unique eye and perspective to the work that we're doing. It's really fun to watch him teach the ladies' variations class and to have so many wonderful, positive things to say and to give them some insight and some tips that are, that's something that I think we hear every single day, is that right? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, it's always great to have a range of teachers and I actually had um, uh, Mr. Jared over the past summer and I loved his class. I really felt like he gave everyone a fair chance to correct us and give us feedback and also um, teach us new things. So I enjoyed having him. Another one of our guest artists that's returning this year is Mindy Averado, who is joining us from Metropolitan Ballet Theater. She is a former principal dancer who really is a lovely woman who has got nothing but energy and wouldn't believe when she teaches a men's class just how much she can get out of them. I'm not sure if you had the opportunity to view her teaching that, yes. but it really is a treat to see how much she brings to the table for, again, the entire spectrum and wealth of the entire summer intensive. It's not just one level, not just the upper level. That's the other thing I like about our guest faculty is that they have the opportunity to teach at multiple levels and it doesn't just go to the top. So we really try and make a point of spacing everything out. The next guest faculty member on this list is me. Um, I put myself as a guest faculty member on the slideshow because I won't be teaching as regularly as I frequently do. I enjoy coming in and being able to see the different levels. I think that the different elements that I like to view during the course of summer intensive also make it so that teaching class can be challenging if I'm isolated into one level. So I really do like to bounce around, see what students have to offer, and also get to view uh, some of the up and coming so that perhaps we have the opportunity to see them in the future here at National Ballet. Our last guest artist that is on our list is the artistic director, Paul Vasterling. Mr. Vasterling really enjoys teaching in our summer intensive. He thinks it's an incredibly invaluable experience for himself to not only see the students that will be participating in the program, but also to impart knowledge and also to give um, the students the opportunity to interact with them and really get a sense of what it is the National Ballet is about. Mr. Vasterling will be celebrating his 20th anniversary with us next year, so that's really exciting. And it's a great opportunity for our students to sort of interact, work with him, and hear his artistic perspective. Um, again, I'm going to defer to Ali here, or Alexander, excuse me, um, on sort of your experience with Mr. Vasterling in the studio. Oh, yes. It was definitely exciting to have him um, teach our class and uh, also come in for our repertory um, because. You just never know what someone's looking for, and when they come in and you get to experience that great uh, relationship is wonderful because he has a great vision and um, definitely gives everyone attention and 
is such a great, uh, great uh, man to learn from for sure, and such a wonderful uh, experience. You could. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to hear you felt that way. And now I'm going to have again Miss Lindsay talk a little bit about our National Valley faculty that is also going to be here. So in addition to our guest artists, you do have access to the full breadth and width of the National Valley faculty this summer. They will be teaching uh, again in various levels. So go ahead. Right. So I think what I'll, I'll do is just kind of um, go through the next the teachers that we have listed and go through through some bright spots and what I feel is really. Um, unique and special about each one of these that um, is going to be teaching you. Um, so I have uh, Denise who is listed and she is um, has a great eye for working with a through line for all of the students. So she works with the company, she coaches and teaches company class as well as working with NV2 and has taught in our academy as faculty in years past. So what she brings to her class is not only attention to detail and a quickness and accuracy of what she asks for, especially in variations. I remember her setting that chai pa variation and watching that specific musicality and accuracy that's so important to our training, mm -hmm. but um, also looking at the artistry. And so where does that come with? I'm layered on top of technique. And what's brilliant about that is the fact that having seen all levels of dancers, that's truly what we do here is we build that foundation of technique, then you bring in that attention to detail and you bring in that artistry. So it's kind of that full package there. And I do want to add one thing that's also really unique about Ms. Eason is that for those of you that have attended in the past, uh, she's, she teaches our musical theater class, which is a class that ends up culminating at the end of our, our big performance or a large musical number where students get the opportunity to kind of relax and enjoy dancing a little bit more. And I think she does a really great job of tying all of that technique together, but also providing an environment that's very free and that musical theater class is just a great example of that. Mm -hmm. For sure. I've also experienced that um, she has such a great energy and enthusiasm for dance, um, for ballet, and as well as uh, musical theater. And so it's almost contagious and it makes you want to work even harder and um, just push yourself to your limits and achieve um, things that you didn't think you could. Right. Um, I see that I'm listed on there as well. It's very <laughs> odd to talk about yourself. But I think I mirror that philosophy that I just talked about with Denise um, in creating a through line as I oversee those academy classes and then teaching currently up from PT from the PTD levels and trainees to NB2. But also um, making sure that with this strong foundation of technique, this, this real connection to the positions that we're in, our legs being underneath us, how we develop our fifth position, our tendu, and all of those things. But also understanding that when you have that mastery of classical ballet, you can do all of the works that are put in front of you, right? So we ask ourselves, how do we build that strong foundation of muscles and bones working properly? And then how do we apply that to more advanced levels and to rep? So I feel like at a summer intensive specifically, that's kind of my philosophy, is getting everybody set up for whatever is asked of them in the future. Um, and, and kind of speaking to that point, the next slide that you'll see that John Uplicker is listed there. Nope, that is not, that is Kate Selma. Sorry, we were <laughs> wrong slide. Um, both Kate and Nicole, as you can see here, are current um, faculty members for us working, again, through the academy level and professional training division. And each one of them has very strong points that they speak to. Ms. Kostelnik currently is working with um, our level four and level six dancers, as well as through some, some of the PTD levels. And you see that foundation, that laid of where is each dancer going through this and also having some company experience from National Valley that she brings to her classes. And then Nicole specifically, um, I feel, has a very, very strong attention to detail and an expanded upon Vaganova syllabus that she works with, especially for her level fives, and up through finding that positioning, that aplomb, that use of the upper body. And that really is a coaching that comes in that sometimes can be forgotten, right? And so I think that that's where Miss um, King really comes in and finds that brilliance in dancers is coming back to classicism and coming back to the foundation um, that that really creates strong ballerinas and strong dancers. Yes, and I think that our next faculty members here, uh, Shabazz, who has specialized and focused his work in contemporary, but also teaches different modern styles. He brings the, to our entire organization a really healthy energy, a great vibe, something that is very inspiring. And I yes. think is 
absolutely contagious. I'm very excited at each time he walks in the building just to see his smile. But in addition, his rigorous attention to detail within the context of contemporary and modern technique is really quite something to see. I also really enjoy the fact that he's willing to explore styles outside of things that are comfortable. He teaches yoga. He also will explore improv and do other sorts of styles that sometimes can make a ballet dancer feel a little uncomfortable, but he really does it in a safe sort of way. Mm -hmm. The next uh, faculty member is also one of our company dancers who's been around for a long time, and that's Mr. Uplager. Mr. Uplager focuses his attention on all levels, but also is primarily when our guest faculty is teaching it, our pas de deux teacher. I have one question that was asking me about pas de deux levels, and I just want to reiterate to everybody that we do teach pas de deux to every single level. Uh, sometimes those one or two week sessions may only get one or two classes depending on how it works as there's so much material that we're trying to get in there. But we do try to make sure at least one class happens for every student that comes to National Valley during the course of their summer intensive and obviously for some of our upper levels that happens multiple times per week. Mr. Uplager also teaches men's class and has, after his extensive time with National Valley, been able to bring a lot of repertoire to the table besides Mr. Masterling's work and also works as a boundary master for the company. So it is a really unique opportunity to work with somebody with that sort of wide range of skills. Our next group of <clears throat> people to take a look at are our wonderful faculty and staff over at Belmont University. Belmont University has been a partner with us for a number of years, and the space at the dorms is second to none. I can tell you that I had the opportunity to visit there a couple of times last summer, and really it is a five-suite unit or four-suite unit with a full kitchen, which includes a refrigerator and stove, and each, I'm sorry, excuse me, students have a separate men and women's floor for each um, they have separate men and women's floors so that men are on their own level and women actually occupy the upper levels. In addition, uh, the catering that is done at Belmont University covers breakfast and dinner if you decide to stay in the dormitories. It does not cover Saturday night dinner and it does not cover any food on Sunday. So for those of you who are planning your meals and purchasing room and board, please do be aware that is something that we run into. Uh, also, as you have four or five um, private rooms in a suite, you do have the opportunity to pick your own roommates during the course of filling out your registration packet. We do our absolute best to accommodate that, sometimes depending on session or uh, schedules, that's not 100% possible, but we do our very best, and I know that our administrative staff will work with you as, as best as they possibly can in order to accommodate your request. The next thing, and it tends to be a point of a lot of questions that we get, is meals. And the food that we provide at National Valley is all local caterers. Uh, you have an opportunity to taste some of the different flavors of Nashville. Uh, we always try and strive to make sure that we're providing healthy opportunities for our students, but ensuring that they receive the proper balanced diet to ensure that they have the energy necessary to get through their day, and also to ensure that they are well fueled by the end of the day and that their muscles can heal and their bodies can rest. Did you enjoy the food? Yes, I can definitely say that the food was great here. That was one of the things that I really enjoyed to be able to have meals for us and not have to worry about that during the day. And there was always enough for everyone. And um, if you have a food allergy or restriction, they always had um, alternative uh, options for everyone. So that was great. Wonderful. Well, the next part that we also hear a lot about is the questions on our chaperones. And I want to express how far we've come with our chaperones and how excited we are about the different sort of training methodology that we've put in place. We spend a week's time really focusing with the chaperones who show up ahead of time. Each one of them do have experience with leadership and or working with youth and young adults that are aged 11 to 22. They have specialty interest in child development, social work, um, nonprofit programs, or uh, conflict resolution. Each one of those students does go through, or sorry, each one of those chaperones goes through first aid and CPR training to ensure that they are well taken care of. Uh, sorry, that they're taking good care of our students. Also, the National Ballet and students 
and chaperones are the sole boarders in Horrell Hall. So we talked a little bit about Belmont University and the dormitories. There's no one else staying in those dorms at that time. It is just Nashville Valley chaperones and students, which is really, really great for the safety of our students. It's great for the safety of our staff. Um, again, Belmont is a wonderful place. It's very secure, and we're very excited that we have this opportunity. Our chaperones also accompany all of the students uh, to all off-campus events. We have a special um, focus on that when students take uh, outings to the zoo or to the water park or to the grocery store, or I know that sometimes they have the opportunity to go dancing in Centennial Park yes, um, sure. Saturday night, which is a good fun activity. Uh, the, the students are not alone when they are off campus unless they are over the age of 18, in which case we do have special permissions that parents and students have to agree to when it comes to that. Uh, when we take a look at uh, the outside life, we want to talk a little bit more, just a bit, about how the summer shapes up for students and their performance opportunities. The, the students uh, in sessions one, two, and four that have signed up will not have a performance, so that's something to really consider um, when you're taking a look at what sessions will work. However, parents do get to attend that Friday class of the last day of the session. So parents get the chance to come in, see what the students are doing, see a class firsthand, have the opportunity to observe faculty, and really get a sense of what it is that their student has been going through during the course of this. Our students in our three, five, six, and seven sessions do perform um, at the end. Typically that Thursday uh, of the last week is when we do our pre-professional show. It is separate uh, from the other sessions, simply because when we put those other three sessions together. Uh, there are so many parents and there are so many people who want to come and see the show and we just don't have the space to accommodate everybody. So we do split it up over two days. Those students that perform on that Thursday, however, do still have class on Friday. You have to stay um, <laughs> and participate in one last day, but it's a great time. It's a little bit more fun. I think we even relax the dress code just a little bit. Um, just a little bit. <laughs> but it's really great. The performances that we do focus sometimes on lecture demonstration and some of the contemporary classes, all the way to rep that the company has performed itself, sometimes that season even, or might be coming up and doing it the next season as well. The students get the opportunity to work with our ballet masters, with our school artistic associate, with me, with Mr. Masterling, as they work towards putting together a finished and refined product. Again, it takes place in the space right behind us, so there's no special need to go anywhere else. The students are able to finish their day of classes, they rehearse here, and it is a really great opportunity for our students to see sort of the culmination of all of their work. Some of the other things that are very interesting about what our students go through day to day is, and one of the questions we get a lot of is the schedule. And I think on one of our slides here coming up, you'll have the opportunity to sort of see what it is and how we structure our day uh, for, I would call it, not your average students, as they are here at our summer intensive, but the day-to-day -day life for a student, yes. Uh, one of the things that we start off with is a warm-up class in the morning, a floor bar or a Pilates or even a conditioning class so that students have the opportunity to get around, get the blood flowing, get some cardiovascular activity to really get that heart rate up, especially when you're so tired after a couple of days. I think it can be really, really challenging. So that class is really wonderful. It's actually taught by Ms. Samorski, one of our ballet masters. She enjoys it as well. After the short break, you see that we tend to, not tend to, we always do a two-hour technique class. And I would like Ms. Lindsay to speak to why she feels a two-hour technique class is important, because I know why I do, but I would like to hear somebody else speak. And, and then this, it occurs to me if I'm wrong, but I do believe that that exists for all of the levels. Same, you know, we, we very much hold our intermediate studi students to that same two-hour technique class that we do for our pre-pros. Because we're laying in that foundation of um, working on growth. Also, that attention to detail that the teacher can take in their demonstration. So that my philosophy is that if you don't know what you're trying to work on, you can't do the work, right? So we need to make sure that those um, combinations are set and they're very clear so that each student at the different level can apply what we are working on and getting it out of each of those combinations. But it also creates that environment of, of hands-on um, and taking the time to really make sure that we are getting each um, uh, exercise, getting everything out of each combination that we need, but there's also repetition. 
there was also room for more jumps and for more turns and repeating combinations, let's say once with um, a clean jump next with, with that too, right? So that we're making sure that everything is building upon that within the class and then building upon that from week to week. Um, so it's great for artistry and it's also great for stamina. So we can move those classes along at a pace that, that gets a, a true result um, in that two hour time slot. Yeah, I definitely would agree that the two-hour classes are really beneficial for um, all students of all ages. Um, I definitely felt like repeating combinations is one of the great things that um, you can really learn from because you don't feel rushed and um, there are opportunities that you may miss in a shorter class that you could really learn from and grow uh, from, especially when you're tired. I feel like that's where you grow the most. So. Yeah. I definitely think that the two hours is a great thing. As you take a look a little further down the schedule, you'll see that uh, we do incorporate point work into class or into our class schedule almost every day for those students that are on point or it is a pre-point class for students who are not, for our, some of our younger students. We do think it's important for that to happen every single day whenever possible. Sometimes that point class will be replaced with a variations class to see the application of the work. Uh, Frequently during that time, the men will have a lunch <laughs> so that the ladies can have access to the full run of the studio and then we'll reverse places and the ladies can take lunch here in the building while the men go ahead and do their own men's class. In addition, after that, we spend about two hours dedicated towards, uh, for lack of a better word, an elective class, something that's a little bit different. Um, that can range from contemporary to sometimes a second technique class or variations or uh, musical theater, as I talked about, an improv class, uh, contemporary, and then after a couple of weeks, once we're getting closer to the performance, we do reserve a lot of that time for rehearsal, so students, again, can go through that process of learning work, growing from it, and developing roles and characters as necessary for uh, their growth as artists. Mm -hmm. And I think when we talk about growth as artists, we can take a look at what the next steps are in our summer intensive as far as professional growth opportunities. Uh, some of you have already asked me about the process through which you are selected for a professional training division. I know that there's a lot of interest there. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But I do want to focus on the top of the slide here, which is that we partnered recently with Laurel Springs to bring an education experience uh, that is online, but catered specifically towards students who are professional level students training to become professional dancers and have a very unique school schedule. It is an online private school, so there is an expense associated with that, but it certainly depends on your credit hours and everything else. And I would advise you to take a look at the Laurel Springs website, and I believe we have links on our own website, where you can sort of see what those costs are. But education at National Valley is a priority for us. And as a result of that, we did pair with them in order to provide a better experience for some of our high school age students. If you're admitted into the professional training division uh, above a high school age and you've already received your degree, or if you're an MB2 student who is accepted, you are automatically enrolled in the Belmont University College Program, which is a great opportunity for students to get a little bit of online learning and training, or they can do work in the classroom in the evenings. I will tell you from my own personal philosophy that I'm more than willing to work with students in order to accommodate an exam schedule or whatever it is that's necessary so that each student has the opportunity to succeed both in National Ballet and outside of it. Um, as we take a look at a professional training division, we are currently uh, in our audition process accepting students for next season, but we will be reserving space for students to be selected from our summer intensive. We will most likely be looking for our training level out of the pre-professional division. Um, that does not make it exclusive to that. Students who participate in any one of our summer intensive sessions will have the opportunity to be considered for any level in our professional training division. The exciting thing about what our professional training division is developing into is we are really creating that through line where students will have the opportunity to come from the summer, participate in a year-round program with a full staff and faculty who work at multiple levels and then move on into MB2, which as I said is I think the best way for a young student to progress from being a dancer outside of National Valley to becoming a dancer in our company. It is a really it is really, really important to us to continue to put forward an effort to promote from within. And I really can't I can't stress that enough how much we talk about that every single 
every single day here uh, when we look at um, again some of the selection criteria I know that I saw one question on there I'm going to try and get to them as they stream by as best as I can especially over on the slide so I don't have to come back to it the uh, students who are here for a two or three week session will still also be considered we'll give them the opportunity to uh, put a, put the information out to us that they are wanting to stay and have that opportunity to be viewed by our faculty in consideration for it um, for some of you also as we look at this again this questions are starting to stream in which is very exciting I'm very happy that you're engaged uh, the placement at the very outset of the summer is done on the first day so students will come in they'll do a placement class mm -hmm. and they will have the chance to sort of show our staff and faculty on that day where they came from potentially from their audition to where they are now and also have the opportunity to be put into groups of students who are able to focus and work on similar elements of our technique so i think i threw a lot of information out at you very quickly i want to make sure that we covered all of it i know that we're very excited about the opportunities for um, you to join us and we have a couple more auditions still coming up this weekend and we're still accepting video auditions um, we'd really like to see any questions that we may be missed uh, one of them here that I'm seeing right now is regarding the dormitories and cookware. Uh, students, I believe, are only provided with a limited amount of, with no cookware, I apologize, so they do need to bring anything of their own or have it um, shipped to uh, the ballet room, would not be able to be picked up until after the first day of classes. And if I'm remembering correctly, you will have to ask my staff to <laughs> confirm all of that, but I believe that is the process there. Um, there is um, there's plenty of space and cabinets for cookware. Um, so if you're worried about space for that, there's definitely room. And they also the chaperones take us to um, Target and Kroger and other um, grocery stores and um, places that you need to go. So if they if you came to the intensive and needed to go somewhere, they're def definitely very generous about taking us places and getting us what we need. Absolutely. We, our chaperones do make weekly runs to make sure that students have the food necessary in their dorms in case, for whatever reason, they aren't thrilled with the food in the evening and they have their own dietary restrictions that we're not quite able to match up to. Again, that's one of those things that specifically for each individual we can tackle as best as possible within reason. So it's kind of a nice thing that happens, oh, yeah, yes? for sure. I really do like those dormitories. I'm really jealous you guys get to stay there. They're really nice. <laughs> Coming from college, I definitely would say that they are nice to them. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, see a few other questions that maybe we could take a look at. Um, I believe we touched on our summer two intensive students from advanced programs ever being invited to the year-round PTD program. They definitely are. It is actually one of the easiest ways for you to be selected. So you're more than welcome to come. If you're not quite sure, you can get a sense of what it's like to be at National Valley before you make a commitment. Absolutely. I think that's really important. I want our families and students and faculty to feel 100% comfortable when we're working together on something quite as strenuous as a professional training division program. Mm -hmm. um, again, the partnering is not limited to specific levels, so that's really great. We have the opportunity to work with all the levels, and I think we're going to have ample men this summer, which we're really excited about. Our Young Men Scholarship Program uh, here at National Valley actually provides us with great number of young men that joined us throughout the course of the program at various levels. So it's really great. They range all the way from 12 up to 18 or 19. So that's really exciting. We've seen a lot of great young men out on the audition trail. So we're excited to see you here. Uh, here's a good question. Does the professional division focus more on Chiquetti, Vaganova, RAD? Um, I would say that <laughs> that is actually a fascinating question that I'm going to <laughs> yield the floor on. Yeah. Um, well, there, there's two sides of it, and I think some of it is, is level-based. So our the syllabus that we currently currently work through in our academy is a Vaganova-based syllabus. Now, I say Vaganova-based because, as you know, that every um, academy that is attached to a professional company works on their own principles of technique. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a Vaganova-based syllabus that runs from level one all the way up to level seven, and within that are specific entities that Mr. Basterling would like to see 
for our dancers, mm -hmm. right? And then I work with Mr. Mulliken on making sure that that follows through for our professional training division. So what you will see through those intermediate levels may be a little more attention to detail to that syllabus. And as you move forward, it's, it leans towards more attention to detail about what's expected of a company dancer. Yes. So we like to show those. So again, you'll see a through line of that, but very much um, the basic Quasi positions, all the body positions of that will be reminiscent of how we approach pirouettes. All of that is reminiscent of work out of the syllabus. But, you know, Mr. Basterling likes to see certain movement qualities and precision. So we make sure that those are applied in our, our syllabus. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a national ballet style, but I certainly think mm -hmm. that uh, we do have unique elements of each sort of, uh, I guess it would be curriculum or mm -hmm. syllabus that we really enjoy utilizing in order to maximize the way that we feel our dancers need to move to participate and fully execute Mr. Basterling's choreography. Um, for students who are interested in staying but are under the age of 18, uh, we do, sorry, that's the second part of this question for those of you not following along in my eyes. Um, the, the housing situation for students who are under 16 would require them to have somebody um, that they can stay with that is at least 18 years old or uh, definitely having a roommate or finding a family here to stay with. We have students that go through that process and they are able to secure housing along with co-sign with the parents. Uh, we do not have housing that is available for National Ballet at this time. Uh, we're just not able to provide it. We do make recommendations uh, for some neighborhoods and some experiences that we've had with specific landlords and we do work with uh, realtors on occasion that uh, have partnered with another person that we are very happy has worked with us both on our mental and emotional health, and that's Anna Pepper, who has, has been a resource for National Ballet. She has found uh, the language necessary and works as a professional to help students ease through the transition of leaving home, uh, not just to recommend people to move to, but also to talk to some of the process and some of the changes that are mm -hmm. going to occur emotionally as you make the move from student at home to student uh, at a program like this. That information, again, is also on our Professional Training Division website. If you take a look at the, I believe it's towards the bottom of the page, there's a direct link to Anna Pepper and some of the information there. So we're able to provide some of those resources. Again, the whole dancer is very, very important to us in making sure that the student is healthy and happy, not just from a dietary standpoint, but also from a, a mental health standpoint is really important to us. Yes. And I think that a student who isn't feeling that way is unable to perform in the classroom. And that really is something that we value and put a heavy emphasis on each and every day when we're working here. Yeah, I definitely think it's great that um, Anna Pepper is here. And we've had a couple of meetings with her um, as an MB2 uh, attendee. Um, I definitely think she has great advice and she makes herself very available to all of us um, and asked if over the summer if we needed help finding housing so she's always um, at the ready for us and um, I definitely think she's a great resource that National Ballet has for us. And she has the added bonus of being a mother of one of our company dancers so she completely and totally understands everything that a dancer is going through. I think for right now, that is all the questions that we have, unless there's any more, which we'd be happy to answer. Uh, if you do have any additional questions, oh, excuse me, I do see one more here. Are students required to stay in the dorms? They are not, actually. Students are welcome to find their own housing off campus if they would prefer. Um, again, we would, students are then responsible for their own transportation to and from their place of staying, and uh, if they, have a parent that's staying with them and they want to make a week out of it, which we've had happen before. Somebody rented, a, I think, an Airbnb last mm -hmm. summer and had the opportunity to come in and drop the kid off and really enjoy Nashville as a city, which again, is a really wonderful place during the summer. We have a lot of activities, so it's mm -hmm. really a great chance for people to enjoy and see, I think, what's becoming a very popular place to live. I think that's everything. Um, if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Our staff is available at summer at nationalballet.com. Um, if you have any specific questions for me or the staff, please go ahead and direct them that way. We're really excited that you decided to stay with us all this time, and we hope to see you this summer. Thanks so much for taking the time to be with us. Thank you.